All right, guys, so we're printing some TPU, and if we look close there, we can see that the bottom looks really good, but the higher we go, the more under extrusion we're having, and it's actually getting more severe. So it looks like that it's software limited, meaning because spiralized mode, and that's what we're printing in, is just one layer all the way around. I think the processing is getting overloaded and it's starting to under extrude and sometimes that'll freeze up the extruder motor or get it to not turn evenly or push evenly which causes the under extrusion so All right, so we printed quite a few prints on the Q1 Pro, and I have to say it's a pretty great printer as it does everything very well. So let's start with some PLA stuff, like this octopus. So everything was printed in the standard profile for the most part, which is the 300 millimeters a second. We can see here one of the tentacles didn't stick and popped off which by the way I did find the bed not to stick over time and I had to wash it to get it to stick again but that's you know after quite a few prints but yeah overall you guys can see the octopus did very well here in PLA it printed out very quickly I think it was just a little over an hour not much stringing with the one millimeter retraction and the layer sit very nicely overall quite consistent and a great print and it shows that you can print many pieces like this and they still mostly stick. So another PLA print is this frog and he's missing a foot which came off so basically it knocked it over and I started noticing that on certain prints it would actually knock over a piece meaning like something in the slicer is not completely traveling correctly and hitting the print but yeah where they did all stick it actually looks really good. And again, the layers go down very well, as you guys can see here. So yeah, and cooling is pretty much on point. It's a little saggy here, but not bad. And all the little details of the feet are great, except for the part that got knocked off. Now, I do have another frog, and this actually is printed in carbon fiber PLA. So yeah, this one looks extremely nice. And because we have the hardened nozzle, we can print abrasives like carbon fiber without an issue. And you guys can see this one turned out very well except for the feet again. It knocked them out, both of them this time. So yeah, other than that, if we look at the layers themselves, it's an excellent print. So yeah, we went from PLA to carbon fiber PLA. And actually we do have another carbon fiber PLA print, which is this Benchy. I decided to print one to see how nice it would be. And this is just a standard 300 millimeters a second. And you guys can see it's quite incredible how nice it looks, again, with quality filament. Just absolutely perfect, beautiful print. So yeah, as much as we like to blame the printer for not being great, filament has a lot to do with it also when it comes to print quality. So if you wanna do carbon fiber printing, this printer here does extremely well. Now we do have a lot of ABS prints as you know, this being an enclosure, we printed quite a few of those. So we'll start with this gear. So this gear really shows precision as these things should break and spin because they're all individual pieces. And again, this is an ABS. I'm gonna use this wrench here to see if I can break them loose. I can, they're kind of moving around, but they're not spinning. So it shouldn't take much force. Let's see, yeah, there we go. Yeah, just need to overcome. Looks like maybe a seam or something, but yeah, pretty much. Just breaking it loose, now it spins almost perfect. So yeah, pretty incredible that we can get a functional print in ABS out of the Q1. Now another pretty functional <laughs> print here is this toothpaste squeezer, and it actually comes in quite a few parts here that you put together. So you put this together, and there's also a cap on this other side that clips on. And then you put your toothpaste, kind of like this one here, through the slot and then into the center roller and then you just kind of spin it around and that'll squeeze the toothpaste or keep it squeezed here going up as you use it and you just slowly, you know, tighten this up as you go. And yeah, it's pretty useful and printed in ABS, it's quite strong and will last for a while. And then when you pull it out, you just push here and just releases the whole thing and you can pop it right out. So here we have a pretty large ABS print and it's kind of like a maker bot I think robot or 
has an M on here. And this thing turned out okay. I wanted to print something larger in ABS and it prints out sitting like this. And you guys can see it has functional parts here and they pretty much all function. We did have some cooling issues here under the arms, but everything did break loose and does move around. It just was not perfect and required a little bit extra fiddling around to get it all to move. But, you know, it all moves and nothing broke. It is an ABS, which is quite strong. And you guys can see where it did print nicely here up front. It looks really good. And all the layers sit beautifully. You just need to figure out these overhangs here. And maybe it needed to be cooled better. And I just used the profile from the slicer for ABS that they have on there. But, yeah, more fine-tuning probably needed to get this to look better. Another ABS print is this chain mail. So this is a smaller one. And I didn't want to print a big one as I felt that it might be knocked off as it's quite risky and time consuming. So I printed a smaller one and it stuck very well and then popped right off. And the chamber heats up really quick, especially with the external or internal heater that does a great job of keeping everything toasty inside. And ABS doesn't warp pretty much at all when the heat is very consistent, so. But yeah, you guys can see chain mail, no problem. Lots of retractions, did a great job. So here we have some ABS wheels in white. I never print them in white, which I wonder why I should probably get more white ones as these look really nice. But yeah, there was some support. Well, let's see how easy they pop off. They seem to be kind of glued in there a bit. They are coming out just a little messy. So again, guys, I used everything that was just standard on the slicer, but actually not too bad here. Just got to kind of pull it in the right spots and it is coming out. The center is still in there. It does come out, but not cleanly. Not bad, but not great. But overall, very manageable with ABS here. And, you know, we were printing very, very hot with ABS. 250 or 260, actually. And also at a very quick speed, printing these wheels. They both turned out great. So if ABS printing is on your list, so far this printer is performing very well here. So another ABS print is this Shark. We've got many pieces. Everything's stuck. The finish is just beautiful on this ABS and the articulating parts all articulate perfectly. But on the front here, we did have a little mishap as one of our tooth bent or broke off and printed, I guess, a little crooked or just broke it off. So, oh, there it goes, just completely fell off. So he's missing a tooth there. Now this mouth is functional. Let's see if we can't break it loose here. Okay, that was actually very easy. But I think I just broke another tooth, prying it right in that spot. It works except for breaking a couple teeth. Other than that, this is an ABS and you guys can see the precision's there and everything is very nice. Here we have a pretty unique print in two pieces and this is actually printed in PTG and PTG is a great filament as it is pretty strong and quite heat resistant and not too hard to print. And this is in two pieces. By the way, this is like some kind of little fidget toy. You just fidget your tongue with. It's kind of like a spring, but yeah, as we open it here, you can see the spring there. So yeah, again, like it's quite strong. You guys can see it's not breaking, pushing it pretty hard. And PTG is great for any kind of functional prints and for springs too, because it does return back to where it is. But yeah, the bottom portion here turned out perfect on the inside. Both of these pieces are PETG, just two different colors. But we did have some sagging problems here. So again, we got some cooling issues. And I used the PTG profile from the slicer. So yeah, again, the slicer needs some work for this printer to print perfectly. Now, before we talk about those two spiralized prints there in the back, the rockets, we have a, another Pet G print and it's actually this really really large kind of like a I guess a trash can that I made for myself yeah I was quite impressed of how this thing came out the bottom is beautiful and it's pretty much taken up the whole width the depth is not as deep but still pretty good and you guys can see it's very even and overall the walls look really good for the most part we had a little bit of under extrusion there and yeah, other than that, it's pretty good. I can feel a little bit of waviness through the Z axis going up. So there's some inconsistencies. And if we look inside, we can see the floor looks beautiful. And yeah, just a really good print. And it's very strong. So this is definitely going to be a print that I will use as a little trash can. But with that said, we're actually going to see some of the issues that this printer does have. 
And starting with the smaller rocket, you guys can see we have a lot of, I guess you can call it under extrusion. But what this is, is actually printed in TPU. And if we look at the bottom here, everything looks very nice and perfect. And as we will go up, we can see we're really under extruding. Now, the printer does print TPU pretty well. It's a little hard to load it in the nozzle as TPU is soft, but you know, it is possible and you do have to print it pretty slow. You know, once you get that going and you print, you will have very nice TPU prints. But if you try to print spiralized mode in small diameters like this rocket, this is what's going to happen. So because spiralized mode is one layer all the way around to the top, the software gets overloaded and starts to lag as it prints and that makes the extruder kind of pause and go and that's what causes all that under extrusion. Now what's interesting is if you print something larger it doesn't really do that but as far as TPU it does print TPU but I wouldn't say it's a strong point. Now for this one this is actually a PLA print and it's also a spaceship and this is actually the full height that this printer can print and you guys can see we don't have any kind of under extrusion on this larger print which is kind of peculiar as the TPU print did have a bunch of it for whatever reason. So looking at the bottom we can see it's great. Oh, our top just broke off but yeah we can see the printer does put the layer down really nice in spiralized mode but as we go up we have this issue here up here so this was kind of like this until it broke. I think I'm about to break the whole thing. But what these are are gaps. And these gaps are caused by, and there's another one here on the top, you guys can see. These gaps are caused by uneven bed travel. So that means one of the sides of the bed is going up a little faster than the other. Kind of saw that on our trash can with layers, but here, because we have one layer, it's very sensitive. If it's off just a little, it won't stick. And that's what exactly happened. And on the very top here, we can see it did very well until it got to the end. We didn't have enough cooling, so it kind of started to melt, but the ball was decent. It didn't finish though because it needed more room, but it didn't have any. So, yeah, and actually, a message came up that it exceeded its limit of travels. So yeah, I mean, some of the things that are not so great about it are pretty minor depending on, you know, how you print and what you print. Other than those few things there, the printer does very well with everything. And actually guys, we didn't even look at this purge bucket here. So every time it purges, it goes in here and I've never emptied this. So yeah, it doesn't waste much at all actually. And the bucket seems to contain it all, no problem. And the mechanism back there does a great job with cleaning the nozzle. So overall, I would say, you know, for what it is and what it does, it's quite an incredible machine. They really packed in a lot of stuff in the Q1 Pro. Being completely sealed, having that internal heater, the crazy temperatures our hot end can get to, 350C. The extruder is extremely strong, but there is one thing that I kind of didn't like, is that it doesn't have a release arm. And so because it doesn't have one, every time you load the filament, you have to go through the screen, and sometimes it doesn't push fast enough or pull it out fast enough and tends to blob up or whatnot else. I wish there was a manual release here for the extruder where you can just manually push it through yourself. But yeah, not a huge thing, but something to consider. The hardened nozzle is awesome as you can print abrasive filaments. We got a very reasonable 245 by 245 by 245 build volume. This is a Core XY machine, so it moves very quickly. You do have to lubricate these rods, so don't forget to do that once in a while. And it does come with the grease. We have a large cooling fan on this side and the chamber fan there. The PEI sheet works well overall. I did have to wash it because it started not sticking for whatever reason, but it could be just me touching it. And also the bed can heat up to 120 C, which I didn't try, but I will believe it. Another thing that surprised me is the smart auto leveling, which basically, depending on the size of the print, before it starts it, it only checks that zone where it's going to be printing. And so it doesn't do the whole bed every time, which is really nice because it really speeds up the start process. And I really think that more companies should consider doing the same thing as that really saves a lot of time. We also do have a camera here that's pretty decent and you can monitor your print. The touchscreen works very well, quite bright. And not to mention the whole software integration with the slicer, which combines the whole clipper together and it just works great. And even your phone can be used as a controller and a monitor for this printer. The design is quite nice. We got clear door, looks quite premium. It is a little plain being all black. There's nice shapes that seem like maybe could have been different colors, but you know, this is the pro, so it definitely looks serious. But to be honest, as most of it is all plasticky, it does feel a bit lacking maybe in the build quality. And then the spool holder guys, you can see they're sticking out. It actually sticks out 
way more than expected. Not the easiest thing to get to, but not bad either. And we also did print this. Of course, this pulls much larger hole than most of them, but there's a printed adapter here that helps kind of center the spool, but yeah. Overall, a pretty unique printer that I think most people would really enjoy as it does offer quite a bit of value for everything you get.